the National Academy of Sciences. I'm J.D. Tulasic, I'm the director of both programs. I'm so glad to have you here with us today. We started doing radically new things like meeting together in public again, so thank you for being here. So we're here today to celebrate the closing of an exhibit that we've had uh, here for, it's been a pleasure to have it here for six months, uh, called Math and Alchemy. Uh, some of you have already seen it. Uh, we've had an incredibly fun-filled day uh, <laughs> working with families in the community for a family day, uh, uh, working with uh, members of Math and Alchemy who helped create it, as well as the Smithsonian Early Enrichment Program. Uh, this has been, as most of you who have been here before know that Cultural Programs is very dedicated to exploring the intersection between art and science. And this particular exhibit that celebrates the beauty of mathematics takes it another step forward and it talks, and it talks a lot to the spirit of collaboration. Um, the Math and Alchemy started with two, two wonderful people that I have on stage uh, with me now, um, Ingrid Dubachet and Dominique Ehrman. And that conversation grew to over 20 people who were math, uh, mathematicians and artists and just people who had a passion for it. And so since we had the family day, there were a lot of Math and Alchemists and friends uh, who came and a lot of them are in the audience. And I wonder if those of you who participate today, if you would stand up and uh, let, us, let us see who you are. I think, uh, I think there's a number of people who aren't, but thank you. And so let me, Dominique's beginning. Okay, summer 2017, I was invited to go to Ifield Hall to present an ex exhibit and it was successful. And Annie Dean, the curator at the time, asked me, what's next, Dominique? And I said, my dream is to create a large installation steampunk. And she looked at me and she said, I plan to create an exhibit, steampunk exhibit in 2019, but I'm lacking a large piece. So I had my ticket to create that piece. So I, I did what I always do. I, I went back home and I started my drawings. And at the moment I was, no, you can, uh, you can stay on this one. At that moment I was mostly known with this piece, which is called Come and Follow Me. And it's more traditional, and it was done in 210. So I was looking for a way to show that I could create something more complex. So I, I went home, I create the drawings, I invent the story, I create the drawing and the scale model, which is one-fifth of the installation. But then I need to make sure that I'll be ready in two years to show that piece. So in our living room, we, Stefan and I, we created a large size paper model of the installation to create all the template I need to make the project. What I, uh, and time to break, I, I was able to present time to break free if you want to change the picture, please. I was present, able to present the pic, the, this piece at I feel. What I didn't know about that is that time to break free was about to cross trajectory with Ingrid and it was preparing me for metamalchemy. And so having contacted each other through Facebook Messenger, which we never do and have never done since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, I, 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 well, I was trying to interest this museum quality artist that of working with mathematicians. So actually to bait my hook, I, sent, <laughs> I told her about uh, 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 mathematicians who, do, who are fantastic artists and crafters in, in their own right and who use that to illustrate points in mathematics. So I, I told her about the work of, 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 of these three wonderful uh, uh, mathematicians who became part of the Mathematical team. And I, I sent her books, books about crafts and about and one and books about mathematics. And, and, uh, and then we start a conversation that would still to this day, yes. every week we talk, every Tuesday morning we talk. So she, Ingrid, as a great professor as she is, she explained me what was her vision, what 
maths and I took the habit of reading every morning two to three hours to be immersed to learn about that and in the afternoon I was drawing making sketch and every week I would show her my sketch and we would talk and draw and talk and draw and that's the way slowly we, we were able to create together the first small scale model so it evolved as a as a garden of, um, of many maths uh, feature. It, it was simpler, you, you know that's, uh, and uh, in December it was ready to yes. go to GMM in Denver. And let me, I want you to remember, you see here, there are three black figures, we call them the silhouettes, they're still in the installation now. They survive. We'll, we'll talk about them a little bit later, but note the, the adult mathematician, she's kind of stiff, she stands there, she's puzzled. Yeah. She, uh, maybe we'll maybe it's, it's my way to see math at that point. <laughs> so, Dominique made this 3D model, this, this 3D maquette, and in a little suitcase. Yeah, brought it to Denver. And uh, so we meet in Denver, I, we never met before. Mm -hmm. So we meet in Denver and at the joint math meetings, and uh, uh, Dominique starts unpacking this suitcase and put together this maquette. Yeah. And next. We had a presentation, so we give our talk, and which is wonderful in this picture is, the two people we see in the picture uh, with us uh -huh. is Li Mei and Susan, and they, they are still in the group, and they were at the first presentation we, we gave. And with this little 15 minute presentation, we gather interest. Yes. So what we said is, look, we have this concept. Uh, we look for a team. If there's a team of people interested in working together on making, putting together all these different skills that, that they will bring in making a big piece, then we'll try to find funding, we'll make it happen. But first thing is we have to find people. And, and that event, we, we, we find 16 people for the first meeting. But while Ingrid was giving her wonderful presentation during GMM, I was walking the floor of the GMM and with the, the scale model and yeah. just attracting curious people and engaging in conversation. I, I had five other talks to give that, that conference, <laughs> so I was, I was kind of busy. But at the end, we had a party. And, uh, and all the people that, 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 that Dominique had charmed into uh, <laughs> came and signed up. And they included the three people I showed you before, one mm -hmm. of whom is here. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, so then I, the next stage was, so here were the people who signed up. The, the group was later completed with people who were not at JMM, we, but. We were looking for 12 people, but yes. then we say, Mathematicians are very busy people, so if we have a bigger number, maybe we will have less hours. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and also there were people who said, oh, I have a friend such and such who would love to have done this, but they're not at this year's joint meetings. Can they come to? And so the group grew group? eventually until it included our, the 24 that are the core mathematicians. So we had our team. So then I secured funding. We had funding from, uh, uh, one of the mathematicians had, a fund, had some funding from the Lever Hume Trust to work with artists. And I contacted Simons Foundation and they gave us funding. And I wrote this, this proposal with workshops we were going to bring together. We were a first workshop where we would work on the concept and then we would have two fabrication workshops and we had space, we had everything. Tickets were co uh, hotels Very were Very organized. In nine months, that piece should be finalized. <laughs> and and uh, the third week of March 2020. Was our first workshop. But of then, <laughs> COVID. So we said, what shall we do? Shall we, many people were postponing things, were canceling, were, and so on. And, and I thought at that time that the project would die. And I was sad about that. but. Not knowing Ingrid. <laughs> but we held it anyway. Yes. On Zoom. And so we didn't know much about Zoom yet, but we learned. And, Fast. <laughs> and, and the whole group, actually so many people in the group were relieved that we were still going to do something, that we were, because we were all looking at this, this, this expanse of time before us where we were going to be isolated. And so we held our workshop on Zoom for two days. Two full days. 
of Zoom. I mean, yes. uh, the mind boggles that uh, yeah. the, the, the chutzpah of, of saying. <laughs> but they, they, we did, and we worked, and we hammered out. I mean, everything, even though we had a concept, everything could start from scratch. And it worked. We, we defined scenes and so on. We formed little subgroups uh, that discussed components of it. We talked about the whole thing. And for the next few months, we met weekly on Zoom as a group. And sometimes some people couldn't make it. And then to hammer out everything. Yeah. And early in the process, it was decided that we would take that gift of time. And we would do something more complex more beautiful, and we all assumed that we would need to be more involved, and we all did. We did accept that formula. And uh, that we would have to fabricate a lot at home, not in joint workshops. Eventually, we were going to bring things together, but we would have to fabricate in isolation and coordinate, lots, lots of coordination. And so, so we, we started the conversation and my method to, to work is to listen and then to fabricate items and see if it will work or not. And at the beginning, I needed to convince most of the group that a maquette was the, the way to go because they're all working on their computer and they're very good and they can design everything. But if we want to make sure that in reality world, it will be the right size, the right volume, and it be balanced, we need to see. Uh, and at first, it shows the first ID we put together it was a small lake, but we needed an ocean because yes. the boat was too big. Yeah. So we changed the model and we adapt. And so you see here, I mean, and, and a map was made. We created a territory and we decided right from the beginning that something that you saw as benches or table was the protection around the, the world that we were creating. And, uh, and here, you remember the mathematician who was this stiff person and so on? Through all these months, Dominique was learning that mathematicians are so much more fun, fun? than what she, <laughs> than the image she had, that uh, she, she created a completely different mathematician. And, I mean, and flowing. They, <laughs> each, at the end of each meeting be, before the drawing, they keep asking me, can you kind of, very politely, can you modify the mathematician? Can you do something about it? And so, she Finally, became this I became person. this one. <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I like how, how that really was a, a, a different vision you had Completely. Of what Completely. mathematicians are. And uh, so... So the lake became a, a bay for, for, for the boat, more space. And you see that it's still a little thing with scotch tape and paper, but it, it helps the discussion. And so we had all these meetings. Sometimes we were very skeptical of some ideas. Yeah. And this is one of those times. <laughs> Other times we really laughed. We had so much fun because we made so, so much, we made so many puns and we had, so, and you could do this and you could do that. And everything that made sense and that we could do went in. So that's how we have so many different things in the, in the picture. So uh, uh, by the by the beginning of August, I was finally able to create the maquette, and I remember the the reaction of the group. For the first time, they kind of knew that we were heading somewhere that we were able to build. So so um, it was a nice feeling to prove that with that little piece, and all over the year and a half after yes. that. We kept co coming back to that uh, maquette and saying, OK, you want to add that, but do we have the space? And w it is one fourth of the size of the real thing. So it was easy to take picture, add a small component, show the group. Does it work? Does it not work? OK, move it a bit on the left, a bit on the right. So it, it, it was working every week. And then, of course, once the maquette, we started fabricating. And uh, that was, uh, well, that was when, when, when the real, when the components of the piece started. We had done all the conceptual work, not that nothing changed after that, small things, but the big thing was done. Now we had to fabricate it all, make it physically. But to fabricate a unique piece with 24 people away, we need to have a color chart. And I tried explaining colors <laughs> to my group, and it just, 
didn't work. <laughs> yeah, we, didn't we work. had no idea. So I was looking for a simple solution. So I said, okay, go to your own depot, but it's COVID time. This is scary, dreadful to go to a home depot to uh, find paint chip. But some two people tried. Then we saw that from Canada and United States, the number on the chart was not the same. There are different <laughs> color schemes in Home Depot. So I asked permission at my Home Depot to take a huge amount of pieces, and then I cut them in stripes, so not to use them too much. And I mail to each. Yes. Everybody received their envelope with the kit. So a family for nature, a family for the reef, a family for the human or critters. And those tools were useful all the way. And that's why when you look at the piece, it's harmonious. Because everybody knew that the red that we were talking about at some meeting was the red 225B6. So we were all uh, on the same page because we you cannot trust a screen. Everybody has a different screen. Yeah, that's the Color first appear thing. different. We, we, we thought well on the screen, but no, you can't trust screens. You need a physical thing. And so this was, we had not thought of all these things before, but we solved every problem that came up. We found a way to Solutions. solve. We always. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so once we had things done, we demoed to each other. So here you see Carolyn demoing uh, a, a big one of the big balls in the arches. Uh, here uh, you see me probably showing some cross stitching that I had done for a little mat in, in the curio store on the terrace on top. Uh, this actually once we a year after our first workshop, we made a GIF to celebrate all the things that we had fabricated. I mean, showing at what 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 well, we had we done. But we were a bit far from finalized piece. Yes, this was this or was, this was March. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And so we used so many different materials. Uh, so I want to illustrate and, and crafts and, and, and techniques. So I want to illustrate a diversity of techniques by showing you only a smattering of objects for the whole installation. And for each of the objects, uh, we'll tell you the techniques. And we also flash the photographs of the people who were involved with that piece so that you see all the collaborations that went on. So that's one section of the um, sculpture and it's 3D printing. And you see some 3D printing there. Beading was a lot of work. So many people were uh, asked to uh, be the, in the beading team. Yes, there are many, many, many sea stars in this thing. So, but so, beading was also used for the Conway knot. So. Which is uh, hanging in the Conway store. Ceramic. Most of the ceramic were done by one person. And uh, crochet. So three people were involved with the octopus, but... Uh, For the eyes, the repainting, and uh, crochet was also with the hyperbolic surfaces. Yes, which were uh, uh, cross-stitching, I told you. Well, every one of those mats, uh, my husband had, had a, 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 a spent some time in the hospital. I spent days next to his bed stitching. I mean, uh, so they took a lot of work. Uh, but Very were, precise. And. Uh, and with, uh, on, on this, you have ceramic, you have um, uh, invention of this, imagination of this, and knitting. And knitting was also used in the wall. Uh, that was a long process. Yes. Laser cutting, metal welding, uh, needle felting, origami. And now we're going to show you some work. One example of, of our three big painters in, 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 in the installation. But in fact, there was a lot of painting that went on. I went over all the pictures where you saw somebody painting. And <laughs> there were many people who had to put a brush to the, 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 the whole thing. Uh, we worked with polymer clay. And here actually is something made in polymer clay. But the, the pattern in it was first 3D printed. And then, and all these, every time you have several people working on it, what that means is that it, at some stage, the whole thing was shipped. We subsidized USPS a lot. <laughs> and postal service was working a lot too. Yes. And cross the word. And, and sometimes a bit slow. Mm -hmm. But uh, quilting. So the beautiful cryptographer quilt was a collaboration of, of, of three people. 
And uh, that was a component that Dominique had decided on very early on. Uh, yeah, well, without the help of uh, the two partners, uh, it, it wouldn't be developed that same way. And uh, so this is another hyperbolic surface. If you put pentagons together like that, I mean, squares will fit together and make something nice and flat, or hexagons if you put them together. But if you do that with pentagons, you get something that has too much surface to lie flat. It's a hyperbolic. Uh, so that's structure. another way to make a quilt. But not a flat quilt. Not a flat one. <laughs> and sewing. so sewing went on in many places. In, in, in uh, uh, stained glass, the beautiful dodecahedron on the top of the, the lighthouse is in stained glass. Uh, tamari balls is a... Uh, that was a long process. Uh, that team worked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just two days prior to when we had to do the first construction, I still had one ball that was uh, to, to finish. I stitched for, 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 for think, I think, 10 hours straight. <laughs> uh, weaving, we have some little woven uh, kerchiefs in there. Uh, working with metal, I mean, in the vortex and also for the boat, wire bending. Um, Woodworking of many different types uh, is represented, and uh, and that's it. Well, not quite, not quite. because on the ceiling there is this and there's light, of course. So we've named you. Light was out of order, but all the rest were in alphabetical order. Twenty different techniques, and those are just a smattering, as I said, of the objects. So that's time to break free. All the craft and all the time and all the things that went in there. Uh, this is a beautiful map of, of uh, Mathematical Mean Made uh, uh, by Bronner for accompanying an article in, in, in uh, the notices, the AMS, American Mathematical Society notices that will appear in August. And it shows, this map really shows one of the layers in Mathematical Mean because there are many different layers. There's a layer where these critters live. You've seen chipmunks and quirls and so on. So there's a layer of this magical world where they live, where they make objects, where they do things and so on. And many things are whimsical and have to do with mathematics. We call that the world through the looking glass. So that is, if you look at, at information that you can find on, online about mathematical me, you will find the stories through the looking glass. Uh, which are what these critters live through in their daily life. And so there is Conway's Curio Shop. It's named after, to honor John Conway, who passed away from COVID during the time that we were working on this, and which is the first component that was actually realized physically because a photograph of it featured in the memorial service that was held for him at Princeton. Uh, he loved uh, beautiful geometric objects, and so it was very appropriate to call this store after him. The uh, shopkeeper is Harriet Conway, and uh, she features prominently in the, the, the AMS Notices article. So there is this beautiful store. On top of the store, there's a terrace. You see those cross-stitch? I mean, they took a long, long time. <laughs> uh, so uh, where people can have pastries and other things. Uh, you see um, uh, 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 Harriet's brother uh, spying through his spyglass what's happening in the bay. Um, we have a bakery where Arnold, the baker, has made very special cookies. Look on the cookie uh, the dough. Uh, the shape is something that tiles, meaning that if you punch all the cookie shapes out, there's no waste in between. So uh, usually when you roll out cookie dough and you have standard shapes, you have all this other dough that you have to then re-roll again. And so every time you do that, it absorbs some flour and it becomes less nice. So if you have a tiling shape, none of that nonsense. I don't know why people ever use non-tiling shapes for cookies. <laughs> and uh, so uh, he's called Arnold because, uh, and he's a cat, because Vladimir Arnold was a very famous ma Russian mathematician who worked a lot on symmetries and, and so on, which have to do with tiling. And he had an example to illustrate some mathematical property that showed a little cat figure. So everybody knows about Arnold's cat. So I said, we'll have a cat called Arnold. 
but that cat was imagined, but it needs to stand in real life. It needs to stand up, it needs to have the tray. So we need to find a way, so it will be structure enough yes. to hold. And the head is quite heavy, so uh, I needed to find solution for that. Yeah, and so in, in total, to make Arnold, we had, a uh, we had somebody make the ceramic head. We had a, a wooden mannequin that was taken apart and then put together again, slightly different proportions. And then he Garden needed to be, was made. And, and then he needed to be dressed. So there were four different, I mean, so this thing was made. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the bakery, uh, uh, he, uh, Arnold has a, an assistant uh, who's called, who's a mouse. But when you have a cat, you have a mouse. And uh, the mouse is, is called Mose because Arnold worked a lot with uh, a mathematician called Moser. And uh, on the wall, you have a wallpaper. What else do you have on walls? We have a wallpaper that shows what in mathematics we call the wallpaper groups. I mean, uh, those are the different ways in which you can geometrically arrange a repeating pattern. You can just repeat it, or you can mirror it and repeat it, and, and so on. And so make them different wallpaper groups. There are 17 of those. There's only nine of them here, because those are the nine that you can easily do in knitting, when you have just reflection. If you also want to start rotating, you can do that nicely in the thing. That's why we had these cross-stitching mats. Those have the three more patterns. And then you have some that need rotations by six degrees, and you can find them up there when you look later. Uh, we had so much naming fun, too. This is the nautical scene. Well, nautical is clearly a C. It's not a nautical scene, it's a nautical scene. K-N-O-T. I mean, all the fish that swim there are knots because there's knot theory in mathematics, and so there's a lot of knot theory going on here. And uh, uh, in the garden, in the garden, we illustrate a different num things in number theory. So the mice, the original mice, have become chipmunks, and no longer is there one sad one and one, one happy one. What happens is that they both are having a lot of fun, because they have been told to sort numbers, and uh, one of them is looking at 12 and holding the, the, the thing 12 in cuneiform to, to remind people that numbers go back a long way in mathematical history, and 13. And they, they um, have to find out whether numbers are, have divisors or not. And the way they find out is that they try to put them in shorter rows. And so if you put 12 in rows of three long, then you can do that with four rows or in rows of six long, and you have two rows of six. If you try in rows of five, then of course it doesn't work. You have a remainder. You have two fives and then a, a, a two. The one with 13, no matter what length row they try, they always have a remainder. And those are those little yellow things that, that you see here. Those are the remainders. These are the remainders with five. But the other ones don't have remainders, as you can see when you go up. So. Discovery of prime numbers. They're both very happy because both found numbers that have lots of properties. One with lots of divisors, one has no divisors. And uh, the squirrels are doing uh, something where they find primes in a more systematic way. They're doing what's called Eratosthenes Div, and it's explained on, online and so on. Uh, they find all, all the primes easily by taking away uh, multiples of other numbers. The same thing is actually illustrated in the pavers for uh, uh, those of, 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 of you who, who, who know mathematics. What is illustrated here is a sieving uh, like with Eratosthenes, but for the Gaussian primes. So with a few scenes, we have gone from something that is easy to do for elementary kids, school kids to something that's typically something that you do in, in, in a more advanced algebra course in college. So uh, there's many things at many different levels in the mathematics illustrated. Another layer in, in the installation is the layer of the silhouette. So I talked to you about the layer where the critters live and where a lot of math is illustrated. So, uh, but the silhouettes live in a different layer. The silhouettes, it's not really clear whether the, 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 the critters in the world know the silhouette. Some of them probably intuit them. 
so the silhouettes are, are, they were there from a very early concept, as you saw. Uh, they depict the way the viewer, uh, the makers, experience mathematics as a little girl or as an adult or as a teenager. You have a uh, little girl sitting on a stack of books, which all have to do with mathematics, blowing her horn, and her horn is producing a vortex sheet of, 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 of air. Uh, you have the teenager uh, uh, riding on those vortices on her homemade rocket board. And you have the mathematician who is actually, let's float lots of her ideas in this, this aerial ca cavalcade. Of, of pages, uh, which some have deep theorems, some have beautiful observations, lots of, they have to do with mathematics, no rhyme, no reason. I mean, all the whole union of, of, of things that she can think of. Uh, the cavalcade is, uh, well, as I said, lots of mathematics. We actually talked a lot about what to do here. We had proposals, we voted, and so on. And again, a lot of collaboration in order to get this mix. And every time somebody said it should have this and very be very structured, explain the whole theory, the other said, no, 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 it should be very eclectic and mix and so on. It was always that eclecticism that, meant that, 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 that had the most support. I mean, so there's things of very different levels. There are uh, results that are uh, breakthrough new results that, uh, will, that get people big awards, and, and there are others that are. Uh, uh, observations that go back to the ancient Greeks and that are uh, beautiful but simple. And uh, uh, So the little girl is sitting on a whole lot of books. And for the books, again, we had a whole discussion and we voted. We have some books that go back to uh, 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 the roots of mathematics. We have uh, something that goes to Euclid's elements. We have a book of, of uh, ancient China. Uh, it's another one in Sanskrit. We have the book of al uh, that was the vehicle to which mathematics uh, from, from Asia flew uh, and was enriched by the Arabian cultures and then flew uh, to, to, to Europe uh, in the Dark Ages. Um, but we have other books that are contemporary and that are relevant to things in, in, in the installation, like, I mean, how could we not have a book that talks on uh, uh, the beauty of, of, of geometry? I mean, of course, we had to have that. So, uh, and then we have books that you might not think of mathematics, on weaving. There's a lot of mathematical ideas in weaving, actually. So, we, again, we alluded to many different things. Uh, and then there are, to somebody asked me, said, but this little bird, in what layer does it live? And it actually lives in no layer at all. It's a joke. Because in the layer of the critters, there's a window there. I mean, Harriet, in the evening, rolls down the metal curtain on her store so that it's off locked because you have glass everywhere and then the metal curtain and the store is now locked and so on. But of course, you and I, we know that there's no glass there. And so this little bird is sitting there saying, there's no glass here. Ceci n'est pas une vitre. And uh, so. But on the practical side, the silhouettes are real, real, very real, because they will help me to hide all the structure, all the uh, things that need to float and fly and be poetic, and so you won't see that. But the the little girl, uh, the, all the books they're real, so they're heavy, and it's um, it's bolted on the wood floor. So that's a very solid structure that can enable me to um, throw the vortex up to the lighthouse. But the teenager is over there because, and there's a cavalcade, and the cavalcade is a long stretch of a lot of things that needs to fly away. So I need to create the illusion of flying. So in the, the mathematician is very thick, solid, bolted under the floor, and then hidden on the quilt. So you see the flow of pages, but 
there's also a, a structure that is, and there's a structure in the quilt. It needs to be solid. It needs to be in metal. It needs to be bolted to the, the wood floor. And I will create the quilt, both sides of the quilt, and sew them on machine. But then I create the sculpture, and everything needs to be sewn and sewn to all together and create one thing, which is a, a post that will support the other post. And then the magic can happen. And that, that, that's, that's the role. And the teenager, which is higher, but is supporting the vortex and creating uh, um, the, the post with all the signs. So you don't see that, but it anchors everything. So that, that's their big role. Even if they don't show in the real world, they're very real for me. <laughs> yes, they were, and they were there from the start, and they were what Dominique would think of as how she could anchor those things that we, we collectively dreamed up, the quilt. Yes, um, every creation like that I, I design like I do and then everything is reproduced on fabric and then I mostly work machine for the blocks. So every detail has been done on a sewing machine, a very simple sewing machine, but it's an electric needle. So I end sew with an electric needle. That's the as fast as I go. So it's a long process, but it permits you to be very, very precise. And for that, the, the challenge was, was not to create the quilt, was to be able to reproduce the mat that the mathematician, so the message we need to talk back and forth, because if I push that a quarter inch, the formula was not the same. So we went back and recreate, making sure that every uh, quilt quil block was mat precise and beautiful work. As, as one of the mathematicians says, there was a lot of zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was only one side of the quilt. We had to do the second side. Yes, the, so the first side, the cryptography, was there from early on the concept, and then it was worked out. The other side took quite a while before it gelled, but eventually it did gel. And, uh, uh, and here you see the painstaking work of, of Dominique doing it. No, it's fun, not but painstaking. <laughs> Lots of time, but fun. Uh, the concept we had for that, we, we wanted to honor Maria Mirziakani who was a, a fantastic mathematician, the first one to ever win a Fields Medal, which is a very, very prestigious award in mathematics, and who uh, tragically died very young of breast cancer. But uh, she also was a, a fun, but very modest person. And it, it, as I was trying to design this, this quilt, it became clear to me that she would have preferred being amidst a group of, 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 of other people. And so emerged the idea of having something that would pay tribute to, uh, again, a completely eclectic group. We have, they're all women mathematicians, because, well, our group, by complete happenstance, the volunteers who showed up for our project were a large majority women, and so we felt some, some pride in that, some joy in that, so why not celebrate it in the doodle quilt? And it was voted uh, Absolutely. Uh, by everybody, men and women. Yeah, even by our four dudes. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, we, we, uh, so we celebrate it. So the border is actually a, a pentagonal tiling, uh, non-regular uh, pentagonal, but by Marjorie Rice, who was an amateur mathematician, uh, who solved a problem that uh, so people thought that they were, or had all been found, and she found some more, and so that was. But there's uh, notes of, of uh, that Ada Lovelace uh, uh, took in discussions with Babbage, where she was discussing the Königsberg problems. There are uh, diagrams by Alicia Wulstadt, who, uh, despite never having, not even having a college degree, got a an, an, an honorary doctorate uh, uh, when when. After, after she had worked with geometrists, she had an incredible insight in four-dimensional geometry. 
and uh, she worked with, with some very famous geometers. Um, there's Maria Mirzakhani's work, but there's also the drawings of Gladys West, who did, who was uh, 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 an African American woman who uh, worked for uh, uh, for the Navy and who developed the mathematics for the modeling of the Earth that is still used now for GPS. I mean, uh, from satellite data, she made the right model that is now still used in, in GPS, uh, which is ubiquitous. So uh, we had their notes, scribbled notes of Sonia Kovalevskaya, who's a very famous 19th century mathematician, uh, who in her notebooks we find that when she uh, made a mistake, she crossed it through, and then she made little flowers out of those. I mean, so. Which was the angle that, uh, that was fun because yes. it, it could have been very serious that page and very honorific and, uh, but we took the angle of their doodle, the, yes. the way they were so creative and imaginative and math is fun. Yes. So, that, so the great it, it, was, it was nice to reproduce all those models because at first they make any sense for me, but they, I, I research and, and then it makes sense. And, uh, and you see that you have the two arches that are out of the, of the quilt, but it needs to explode to make sense that the arches why are yeah. there and why yeah. are they leaving? So I had to create a, an explosion to set the, the arches yeah. and the support so it will be solid. And so here you see, I mean, I gleaned all this, this material from different mathematicians and then uh, uh, we digitized it and then Dominique beautifully made it into the, the great little page. So yes. Uh, there are all these different components. We've talked about the silhouettes, we've talked about the arches, uh, the, 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 how things hang together there, but there's also the lighthouse. Which was a big project. <laughs> I give the challenge of the group to find an elevated art piece that would balance the rest of the installation. We needed that. So the lighthouse came out early. The, the idea of the lighthouse came out early. But I was afraid that if we would stick to a real lighthouse, it, it would not be at the level of a sculptural installation. So I, I, I showed them picture, compare how a building could be a straight concrete building, but it could be a piece of art. And they got it. And they, with only that explanation, they went and they, they and did so, that. And so the, the, the structure of that is actually something for which some new mathematics was developed. Because uh, it, it's, it, we decided early on that it would be made out of steel. And so it needed to be welded. And uh, when you weld steel, what you really do is you hold pieces of steel that don't want to be together in that shape, and you force them, and then you weld quickly so that they're glued. And uh, uh, the idea was to try to make a welded structure where you would have none of those constraints, because steel doesn't mind bending a bit. It, 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 it doesn't, there are other things that it hates doing. It doesn't like torsading if, if you have a certain thickness. But, uh, so uh, they, they build a structure which is like a spiral going up, and, but with, with, with a slight slant to the pieces that, that, that are vertical. The result of that is that at no place is there any torsion in this structure. So they first built a differential geometry structure without uh, those, those torsion in, the, in this ramp, together with this, and so on. And then they, they stripped it down to this. And the result is that when it was actually welded, the people who welded it said it was so easy to weld. I said, we held those pieces together and they wanted to be there. We didn't have to force them. I mean, so that was a fantastic thing. And that came from an interplay between mathematicians and, and the people building it. Uh, the stained glass. I mean, that was beautiful. Uh, uh, on the one hand, it, it really used the, the, the expertise of, 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 of Brona, who's a stained glass artist. But then we, we, uh, uh, we discovered that there had been a recent result of people looking at platonic solids and uh, how you could make straight paths on them that go from a vertex back to the same vertex, but without crossing another vertex. And you can only do that on a dodecahedron. And we'd already decided that we wanted a dodecahedron. So when there was this result, Brown said, we have to illustrate that, and she did that beautifully. So, and on top of, of the lighthouse, we have this 
on the ceiling you see this fantastic projection and that's a, a stereographic projection. So again, beautiful mathematics, but then with 3D printing beautifully realized and, and you see that, that projection. So, so the lighthouse became an illustration of so many things. I mean, yes, it had this very important element to balance the whole structure, but, uh, and, uh, but then we need to travel. So we need to pack, so we need to plan our, at, right at the beginning when I create installation and Stefan is helping me on that a lot, is we need to know uh, it will dismantle and uh, like the lighthouse is a good example. You have a base, heptagonal base, you have a first piece and then something that can be dismantled at the top because if we want to uh, go to in a, on a plane or even a train, we need to have some restriction of measurement so it, it couldn't be higher than seven feet but it's nine feet and a half. So every piece of material that we fabricated needed to be dismantled and organized and crate and custom fit and different but and then label and then the crate being labeled and every those are very organized people so you have the yellow crate with all all boxes mentioned goes in the yellow crate and then you have the red crate and the black crate so when we uh, put everything together and it, it fits in each crate and then it goes to the next venue so, but it, you have to think this whole piece we were designing and having fun and so on, but Dominique would every time say it has to be able. So it was, everything was designed with the idea that it had to be possible to take it apart and pack it so that it could travel. And, uh, and so it does. And so in, here are the crates when they arrived in the West Court. I mean, uh, so you see the white crate there and then the, the, the other crates. Uh, we marked them in different colors so that it would be easy to find where what would go. So we've told you about this. Uh, we, 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 we've, in one of our write-ups, we call it a curious collaboration because, well, it's curious in that why, how would these people work together? But we are also very, very curious about mathematics, about the interplay of mathematics and art, and about things in general, about whether this thing was going to work. And it did. So uh, here's a picture of all of us. Um, in in all, all, everybody, 24 core, inner core uh, mathematicists, we call ourselves now. Um, if you go and see the installation, you will see boards that give you QR symbols from which you can find out much more than even what we've told you here and uh, about everything, about the fabrication, about the mathematics and so on. Don't forget to first connect to the Wi-Fi of the NAS. You can do that. And then it's, it's it's, be and then you can, you, can, you can do that. But uh, uh, you can find out more on our website, mathematalchemy.org. But I would like to finish by asking everyone of the 24 core mathematicists who is here to come here up because while we have given the presentation, this is as much your work. So please come and, and, we welcome and join us. Welcome Susan, Faye, and Sam, Aza, Sam and Brona. Tasha, Brona. And uh, thank you so much for, for uh, and uh, and we're happy to take any questions you might have. Uh, there are microphones in both of the, uh, the, 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 the walkways. Uh, and you should walk up to a microphone, first of all, so that we can hear you and others can hear you, but also because it's live streamed. And it's nothing so annoying as, as not hearing the question when you get to, to, have to listen to the answer. So please, if you have additional questions, uh, now is your time. Yes, I see somebody walk up to a microphone. And, and you're welcome to answer the question if yes. it's a question that you <laughs> can answer. Yes, Tasha, you will do all the math, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, that's a joke among us. Tasha was always saying, I don't okay. do Tasha You do the smart. art and math, what's the best place to start? To do the art and math, what's the best place to start? To start with the math or start with the art? Oh, that was a lot of discussion. Yeah. Yes. It's it's there's no best There's place. no answer. <laughs> uh, I mean, the fun we are all I think united in say, in thinking that the fun thing is to be creative. 
to, to, to think about what, oh, this is, then what, that, what if I did that? And I think that's the same impulse in art and in math. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think the, 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 the right place to start is to be curious. Yeah, agree. You, you touched on a feature that I very much like about this project, and that feature is that it's almost exclusively women. Would you care to comment on how, what that, what that meant at the end of the day? So, uh, thank you for that question, because of course we, we couldn't help but notice ourselves. Uh, uh, <laughs> but uh, it wasn't intended to be that way. I mean, we, yes, we were two women. But uh, I think in the art of math and, 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 and art, there are quite a few uh, male people as well who write books and who do things and, and so on. Uh, but to the meeting that we held where people came who were interested, it was almost only women. And then with people signing up more, it remained that way. And so, yes, at the first meeting, we only had one, one, one guy, one. Yes. Jacob was there. Uh, and at Vogel. Two, two guys, yeah, yeah two. Guys. And but but, but uh, we said, oh, this is interesting. And uh, I have a theory about that. I think the collaborative part of it was something that women liked and men liked less. Not that men don't collaborate or that all women are good at collaborating, but it's, if when you put it as a thing at the start, it is something that I have ob observed in other uh, settings, uh, academic settings. It's something that makes women feel, oh, this might be fun to work with other people. And men say, oh my God, I mean, other people are going to tell me. Or, but or what? What, what was interesting is that there was, there was, I don't feel that there was competition. Eh? No, it a good idea was a good idea. From a guy, from a, a woman, yeah, the, a, a good idea was a good idea, or a bad idea was a bad idea but, from everybody. But, but there several weren't very many bad, I have to object that. I don't know that there were any bad ideas. I but think I produced some. E each five <laughs> ideas, we only accept one. But, but they weren't bad. No, were, no it's true. actually, you're, it's you're true. right. I, I, yeah. As I prepared this talk, I went through lots of the materials, and I said, oh my god, there was that and that and that, and we never made that. I mean, and, why? And I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> oh, there was this thing, and because I was looking for some pictures, and I yeah. saw something, and I went, "Oh yeah, we never did that." Oh, and so, but so uh, we it made for an atmosphere that was also very. Yes. But we 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 had decided that early on that we wanted a very collegial, very collaborative atmosphere, uh, always, and so uh, we we tried to to uh, Dominique at some points. Uh, I, kept me down because I can be competitive. <laughs> I mean, so, so, uh, uh, so then I, I would say, oh yes, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> but uh, um, in the end of the day, it, so as I said, for the Doodle page, we voted, look, yes. let's make this a celebration of women. And everybody embraced that. I mean, uh, because there are more women in, I mean, there are too few, but there are more women in the past than you might think uh, in mathematics, actually. And uh, so, I think it made, it was serendipity. It was not something we sought for. It's uh, something that happened. I think influenced and influenced the atmosphere of the group. Yeah. But uh, we enjoyed it very much. I, I have another hypothesis about the predominance of women, by the way. Yes? I'd, like, I think the things that you say are true, but I think the fact that it starts with quilting and always had a lot of fiber arts. I think there mm -hmm. are a lot That's of these true. things that, that, are that like if you look at the mathematical art community, there are a lot of men who do mathematical art, but the fiber arts tend to be more female dominated. That's true. But, and, and it's true, but, but not, there was a lot of non-fiber arts in the sure. whole installation. Mm -hmm. and, I but think it's it helped, true, though. But you I think, think but you're it right. It did start with fiber arts. It, yes. It, start, it yes, started that way. Yes? Uh, a number of times you've mentioned voting, and since you're mathematicians, I was very curious about what mo voting methodology you used for, de for your decision making. I, I know, and I know voting can be done in many ways, and I wasn't going to be very sophisticated about it at all. I just asked people to vote yes or no on things, or, 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 or uh, I asked them, uh, give Raise me- Raise your hand. Or, or, <laughs> no, about it. Uh, well, no, they were on, on the, 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 on
cavalcade. cavalcade. I oh, asked yes, that, that was a yes, that was a yes. vote. Vote for, the vote for, for the, yes, for 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 the so many that you like best. It was a kind of uh, 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 approval voting because I would accept if somebody says I can't choose five. Can I take six? I mean, uh, uh, so, but but I always was very transparent about. I said I'm going to ask you to do this, and here are the results. I mean, I did not uh, give the individual preference schemes of everybody. Uh, but, but, uh, and then if somebody, if there was something rejected, it would get a second chance. I mean, uh, in a later, I mean, people could re submit reincarnation, and mm -hmm. some of those did make it. I mean, we tried to, but yes, we voted. But with the idea was that people, if there were too many choices, if they were, then, then let's see what the majority of us thinks. I mean, it was not always easy to do. I mean, we already were Zooming a lot. If we had to do all, every discussion like that on Zoom, then uh, yeah. But so, I, I do realize that there are other ways of doing voting, but it was very non-sophisticated. Uh, yes. So now that you have this whole organization, where, where do you go? Oh, uh, so Mathemalchemy, uh, well, first of all, we become good friends. So, which is a great thing. Uh, um, the second is that uh, uh, the, the piece itself will travel. So it's, it's going to go to uh, different institutions. For the moment, we're booked up until the fall of 2024. Uh, uh, it's going to uh, Boston and to Juniata College in Pennsylvania first, and then to Boston University, then to uh, 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 Vancouver, Vancouver uh, University of British uh, Columbia, and then uh, to Seattle. We don't know yet whether it will be at the University of Washington or a museum in Seattle, and then later to Georgia Tech. So those are, I mean, those are tentative plans for so, the, the later ones, but they're not contracts yet. But we, the idea is that it, it interest is, is interest very is much, high, yes, and it takes uh, 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 time to put it together and take it apart. For the moment, Dominique and Stefan, her husband, and uh, a co-setted mathematician, mathematicist, uh, 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 steer the local team in doing that. But we will eventually they will train up somebody else to do this. Uh, so we hope that everywhere, like it did here, it will stimulate interest in, in math and, and, and from a different point of view than it's usually done. Uh, many teachers have said that they're interested in materials that we put online to use in their classes. Um, we have no project right now of, of making a, a big thing, but they, I think some of us have made projects of, in smaller groups of working together. Uh, uh, well, because we're also much busier right now. That, that, that COVID is, 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 is uh, the COVID isolation is, 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 is more, is receding, so, yes. Um, I was a teacher for 36 years, and uh, as a youngster, I didn't get math, I couldn't add or memorize my uh, tables, and I was too young to get algebra when the smart kids got it a little earlier. And it wasn't until I taught fifth grade for about three years that it dawned on me, at about the same time I picked up the fiber arts, weaving and needlework and, and that kind of thing, and constructing bubbles like those uh, uh, 3D stained glass, that I realized that I was as much a mag mathematician as those of you up here are craftspeople, and that mathematics was absolutely beautiful in so many ways. And it came about from watching youngsters learn something new, but it also came about because it, it didn't deal with computation. And um, I, I came to love math, and right. my question was, where will you be going? As a teacher, how can you spread some of this joy of the beauty of mathematics to non-mathematicians or non-calculators, mm -hmm. but people who are in their soul mathematicians, and I'm pleased to hear that you're going elsewhere. 
where could we read more? I wanted to read some of the books you get you gave Absolutely. out. Absolutely. I mean, and and some of them are referred to in 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 the materials that we we, we talked to about on on uh, mathematical.org and and and. Uh, uh, but but so please spread word about the website. Please, uh, it's it's also we mean the website to be a living thing. So if people develop math, math, math materials that that go with it, then we want to refer to them. And uh, absolutely. So I'm so project. glad. Thank you so much. That really, uh, you're absolutely right. Mathematics is not just computation. Actually, uh, computation is just such a small part of what mathematics is. That uh, I mean, the, but the beauty and structures and, and the relations. And, and uh, does anybody have anything to add? Uh, we should do a book. Hmm? <laughs> we should do a book. <laughs> okay. Yes. Please tell me that you will be producing and selling the tessellating pie cookie cutters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have a plan of putting uh, together, of, of publishing a, a 3D printing thing with which people can 3D print their uh, cookie cutter. And, yes. and we just launched, uh, Tasha just launched an online boutique where we will keep adding material like uh, the t-shirt we, we were wearing today. And yes, this is going to yes. be on online. I'll, I'll, I promise. I promise solemnly <laughs> that I will make that 3D file and it will come on, on the boutique. Well, I'm, I'm a former teacher. I've currently gone back to school. I'm studying art. So watching a lot of this, I sew, I've done needle felting. So many of the things that you guys were doing, I've, I've done. And uh, my son is a math teacher. So we actually took a course in mathematics in art this past semester together. And so this wow. has just been a wonderful combination well, of all of that. Tell him to come see the exhibit. Well, when no, it goes yeah. to the next, 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 next venue. Because it's the last day. OK. OK, thank you. I okay. think that's it. So we have reception thank now. Thank you. You've thank been you very so patient. Thank you. Oh, yes, good, good. It's always good. talk well. We're always <laughs> want to ask. Oh, but it's the first time that I've heard the story from the beginning with so much detail. Oh, good, 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 good. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, good. Very nice. Great job. Very good. Is this going to be put online somewhere? Yeah. Yes, it okay. should be.